Hello everybody, I uh, have got my um, bicycle wheel motor constructed and running and have been playing with it uh, today and I've been getting some very interesting results. Uh, plus I've been uh, doing some research on how these things really operate and I think I'm starting to get a pretty good understanding of what's going on here and some of the critical points you, you have to to do to make these things run and I just uh, I'm also getting some very interesting uh, obvious pulsations or, or uh, radiant pulses that uh, Bedini's been talking about with this with this uh, with this style of, of motor, so I wanted to demonstrate that to you and uh, and so let me give you a little bit of background on what's going on here. Right now, I'm showing you the voltage of the battery that I've actually recovered and have been driving this motor with, and and uh, my hard drive motor here been driving that with it as well so that was a dead battery and now it's it's running stuff so uh, you can definitely recover batteries so anyway these uh, these are the two amp meters this one's showing the draw from the primary and this is showing what's going into the secondary they're both in 10 amp mode right now because I, I want to show you the difference and some things that go on when it goes backwards and forwards so what's going into the battery is uh, not going to be completely accurate you're not going to see this the subtle changes in it and I'll change that later so you can see those changes um, alright let's see what else am I forgetting okay and right now I've got a I've got a six six pole setup with uh, both north and south facing magnets. Uh, earlier I was messing with just a six pole with um, north facing magnets. So it seems to be uh, running a little better with the north and south thing and I'll explain a little later what I think that is but it, it has to do with I think the timing of everything and the spacing of these and uh, I, I built up uh, a bunch more of these guys so that I can actually uh, close the gap so that things are firing a little more quickly and and that has to do with the fact that I'm only using one coil if I had multiple coils going on, that would not be a factor from what I'm under understanding. But since I have just one coil, there's such a distance between the two magnets that this thing really doesn't can't run very fast. And right now, I've got it set up to run pretty much as fast as I can without having any resistance on this circuit. Because at the moment, I've got... Basically, I've got a 4.7 ohm resistor on this thing, and that's it. So, uh, it's you know, it's nothing like 100 ohms or k ohms or anything. It's just just a 4.7 ohms on this sucker. So let me fire it up here. Now, right away, I don't know if you can hear that. I'll shut up for a second. The coil is humming right now. When I first turn the circuit on, the coil hums. Now, if I put the magnet over that coil, you can hear it hum. It did the same thing with the, just the north-facing magnets as well. Now, uh, it likes to spin counterclockwise to, to stop that from happening. You can see the amp meters is drawn you know, w one and three quarter amps right now, and it's actually putting out a uh, hundred or a uh, hundred milliamps uh, into the circuit. But as soon as I spin it counterclockwise, it stops that oscillation from happening, 
and it starts to run. In fact, I can, you know, I know I'm heating things up by letting it sit there oscillating like that. Um, what I've done, you know, I can spin this really fast, but it, it basically settles out to about where it's at right now, actually, uh, at, it, and, it, and it fluctuates. It goes like between 18, 16, or 18 and 15 or so. It sits there and fluctuates. You can see I'm using anywhere between, or, or, or putting back into the battery about one, uh, you know, anywhere from one uh, or 10 milliamps to 20 milliamps or, or 19 or whatever. So let's see. This is the voltage of the supply battery right now. You can see it's gone way, way down, and and uh, I'm going to show you the voltage of the battery being charged right now. Which was at, um, was it? I think it was at uh, 12:33. Yeah, there you go. Now, since this isn't putting out very many milliamps back into the circuit right now, and I'm figuring that's got a lot to do with the spacing of the magnets and the timing of things and so on, but uh, and not having multiple coils, of course. But uh, what was I saying? Uh, oh yeah, this is charging really slow. So you know, I've had it charge way faster, but it. Because it's going so slow, it kind of does truly represent the voltage of the battery. So this is it. It I've had this thing running for an hour or two, and it's not slowing down. It's staying at the same speed. Like I say, I only have a 4.7 ohm resistor on this thing right now. So what I'm going to do is uh, start cranking the resistance up and show you what happens so basically what I've done is I've added uh, 50 more ohms which is pretty close to what I had going I'm doing that with my variable resistors I was doing it with just a static resistor before What I want you to listen for is the way this thing sounds. In fact, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put it right back to where it was so that it's the same deal. Hold on. I'm going to let it settle out here for a minute. I'll probably do some editing on this video so it's all live though. I'm not I'm not pulling anybody's leg. But I want you to listen at listen to the sound and watch the meters pulse. You can you can see that they keep fluctuating and that it seems to almost correspond to the the pinging. I'll, I'll shut up for a second. So from what I am starting to understand, this is this is pulsing at like one six. I counted this out, and it's I'm getting five regular clicks and one kind of a ping. You 
you know, I'm pretty sure the bicycle wheel is accentuating that ping, and I, I think that ping is, is the pulse you're trying to get out of these things. So I'm getting, what, one-sixth or, you know, hardly any pulse action compared to the amount of magnets I have, but that's what you're really looking for. You want to see that pulsing. I mean, you can see how the, the amp draws are pulsing. You're not really seeing it in, in the uh, voltage because it's, it's not putting that much out. So you, you, you would see it here, too if it was putting more uh, milliamps out but I thought wow this really demonstrates what's going on here and I'm gonna improve this and I got lots of ideas how to make this thing run better and add extra coils but I think this pretty much shows the 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 concept of what you're trying to achieve uh, I'm going to be quiet again so you can listen to the uh, sound. And man, I mean, this thing is, I haven't counted it yet, but I can watch it rotate. <laughs> so it, it's going... It, very very slowly right now so I mean this can be improved tremendously so anyway uh, that's what I wanted to show you all and uh, oh one yeah the other thing yeah spinning this the other direction right you can see it it starts to hum again but when I go this way you know, look at the difference, and the coil is still humming right now. You you can't hear it, probably, but it's putting out, you know, now it's putting out 290. You know, you can see the voltage is going way up on the battery, and it, but it, it's drawing, you know, one amp right now. So, there you go. I, I think that has to do with the, with the polarity of the magnets and the way, you know, that's interacting. I, I couldn't tell you at this point. I'm really uh, just starting to understand this stuff. So there you go. Hope you guys enjoy. And gals, sorry.